This good looking devil is Woody, who is buddies with Pesto. If you watch us online, we taught Pesto to Namaste. They, uh, they were actually on a walk this morning when I, picked, when I got arrived. Now, uh, although as chill as Woody is, he has a, a pretty bad case of separation anxiety. And if you see his kennel over here in the background, he's bent some of the bars trying to get out of it. Now, I'm going to go over, uh, depending on how long this video goes, I might go over a video on training the dog to go in the kennel. Woody, come here, buddy. I promise you, you're going to get a lot of treats. But in this video, what we're going to do is teach you how to stay, as well as offer you a number of tips and tricks that you can use for dogs that have separation anxiety. Woody, come. We'll turn this way, make it a little bit easier for you. Come here, buddy. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you to stay, uh, teach him to stay because this is a great way to help him practice being alone. Um, so first thing I do is I put the dog in a sit or a down position. If he prefers down, then just go with the down. Don't fight it. I have a bunch of treats in this hand. I'm going to put this hand behind my back and then I'm going to use this hand free to get my hand signals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, Woody, hey Woody, stay halfway distance between me and him and then I turn it and put it on my chest and I count to three in my brain. Stay. I teach the stay for the three Ds. First for duration, up to five minutes, then for distance, and only after those two, then for distraction. Most people teach the dog for distance and duration at the same time. Stay, and then they start walking away. And then they tell the dog, come to them. That is confusing in a whole bunch of different ways. So what I'm gonna do is keep on practicing the stay until I can get to five minutes. Stay. Stay. Remember, anytime you give a treat, the day should get the command word, or uh, they should hear the command word after the treat goes in the mouth, immediately after. I went from three seconds there to six seconds, now I'm gonna go to nine seconds. Stay. Stay. Now you see his focus is pretty good. Uh, now you wanna go sometimes by three, sometimes by four, sometimes by five, go at your dog's pace. And if you go from five to 10 and you go and you count to nine and he gets and he gets up and walks away, then practice again at, at eight or seven. Always back up a step. Now it doesn't matter that he's not looking at me when we're doing this because eventually we're gonna have practice having him stay where I leave the room. That's where it's gonna really help with his separation anxiety. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. Stay. Stay. Great focus, Woody. Now I want to give him the command that he's released. The way I do that, and we've selected the word free, the guardian has before we start filming. I'm going to show him I have a treat. I'm going to toss it over there. Let's try that again. He's really good at stay. Well, normally what happens, this is the first time this has ever happened, the dog will get up and walk over and take the treats. When he does, I would say the word free when he licks the treat up off of his mouth. So the whole point of this, even though he's still doing a stay, and if he continues doing like this, then get up and walk away yourself. We want to know we're done doing the stay. Um, the whole point of a stay is you stay until you hear one specific command. In this case, it's going to be the word free. My dog also has to wait. Uh, as well as a stay. Wait means wait until you hear the next command, which might be sit, come, lay down, uh, release, or whatever. For, uh, uh, when he's in a stay, he has to stay until he hears the word, the specific word release, uh, or whatever, in this case, free. So the idea is, at first we want to go by whatever the intervals are until we can get our dog to stay for five minutes with it right here. For a lot of dogs, staying and not doing anything is very difficult. The guardian and I talked to off camera a little bit earlier and she's like, sometimes when I ask him to roll over, he like sits and he does other things as well. I call this the floor routine. I want a treat, I don't know exactly what to do, so I'm gonna do everything until I stumble across the thing you want and then you give me a treat. This is why we wanna say the command word after we give the treat to the dog, so that way we associate the reward with a specific command and then when we say the specific command, they know what's going on. Now I also went over passive training and petting with a purpose, which is gonna really help the guardian. But we want to talk about separation anxiety in this video because the stay is just one segment. The idea is once we can get to the point where the dog can stay for up to five minutes with you right here, are you going to get up and go get those? This would be a very delayed free, but we'll give it to you. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead, Woody. Free. 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 Now I threw three treats to try to entice me. You just keep the camera on me. Um, uh, but normally I just throw one treat. 
So you're gonna practice maybe five or 10 or however many times you practice the stay, and then the very last thing you do is you throw the treat off to the side to create the break or the, the free word command. Now, you only have to do that uh, maybe probably while you're doing the five minutes, and you won't even have to do the whole five minutes. The next step is once we get to the point where the dog can stay for five minutes, you should be able to get up to the five minute mark within about a week and a half to two weeks. Really, you wanna practice this in very short segments repetitively throughout the day. Don't do a whole bunch of five minutes of stay. Do like a little, you know, five, five treats, whatever the interval is, until you can get up to the point where it's five minutes. And at one point, you're gonna be like, stay and waiting for 60 seconds before you give them the treat and then go to stay again. And that's the whole point. Gradually work your way up or stay, and then I'm waiting for five minutes before I give you the treat. And the dog is not getting up and moving away. And again, I don't care if he looks at you or not. Once we get to that point, then I'm gonna stand up now, so let me adjust a little bit. Um, so let's say that this is the dog, and I'm standing now. I say, stay, put my hand back to my chest, I take one step backwards, and if I took one step back, my count is two. And then I take a step back, and then I give the dog the treat again, and I say stay. This time I might take two steps back. One, two, and I'm going to count to four, then come back one, two, and give the dog the treat. Now, you, now that's my starting point. Every dog is going to be a little bit different. Go at your dog's pace, not at your pace. And this is the biggest mistake people make when they're training the dogs, is they push too far, too fast. Um, if the dog gets up and moves away, that means you didn't practice it and establish it quick uh, enough with the duration. Get to five minutes. A lot of people who tell me that they tried this and it didn't work, skip. They only get two minutes or three minutes. Five minutes is the goal. So once you get to five minutes, then you gradually start moving further and further away. Now let's say that this, this door right here represents an actual wall and you can't see from your perspective anything beyond this because this is an actual wall. So let's say the dog's way over there. I say stay and I'm walking away. Or let's say the dog's in front of me, or the camera is. I stay, and now I'm to the point where I can walk 20 paces away, or a reasonable distance. Once I get here, I take one step to the side. Now you can't see me, I'm scared from the wall. I just wait one second, I come back, and then I go back and I give the dog the treat and say stay. The next time I come back, I might do the same step, or I might step to the side for two seconds. And then I come back and give him the treat. So again, we're gradually, very progressively elongating this until you can stay out of the dog's sight for several minutes at a time. Once you get to this point, um, then you're ready to start practicing for what we call uh, for distraction. Maybe you have a dog barking on TV, we have a buddy pesto dog, maybe pesto comes over and hanging out in the corner. Staying when pesto's right there, that's a lot more difficult. Well, that's life. We have to prepare the dog to stay in all sorts of different scenarios. But teaching him to stay when there's at the dog park, that's way too complicated or too advanced for a dog to do. You can get a dog to do that. But you have to first have the dog practice staying with another dog that's being calm in the apartment way at the other side of the apartment. Then maybe and after a while, we have that dog kind of jumping around and barking while I'm staying. Then we have a second dog come in and now eventually those two dogs are, are playing together. We work our way back up to the real world situation. We prepare our dog for success. Okay, so once your dog has uh, the stay for uh, duration and for distance, then what you want to start doing is put the dog in a stay, getting up and coming over here and get a drink of water, and then coming back and giving him his free. Put him in a stay, come over here and cook a little something, or go to the bathroom, or change clothes. The idea is, again, like we talked about, increasing the duration of the stay. Now we're going to help him practice being alone for progressively longer and longer periods of time. Dogs with separation anxiety, typically there's two types of dogs. I'm panicked because I'm incomplete unless I'm with my guardian, I'm very insecure. The other dogs, I, I feel like my job is to protect my guardian, and when the guardian leaves without me, I can't protect her, and I freak out. I think it might be actually a little bit of both cases. I mean, I've got indications of both directions from the guardian. Um, but in either case, building up his self-esteem through teaching new tricks and commands and things that we went over off camera will have a profound impact. But also teaching him to stay while you eventually take a shower. Or eventually, you're gonna go in your bedroom and uh, watch some, a TV program on your laptop or your tablet and progressively get to the point where you're helping them stay for longer and longer periods of time. For dogs with separation anxiety, they panic when they're left alone. Well, we can help him practice being alone while I'm still here, but just not directly in direct eyesight or direct physical contact with my humans. And the goal for dogs, not the goal, but if you have a dog that has a behavior problem or you're trying to train them to do something, once they can achieve two hours, you never have to practice beyond that. Now, I don't think the guardian's gonna have to practice up to two hours. But the idea is, and he's not as bad as a lot of dogs, but a lot of dogs, the, bathroom, the guardian goes to the bathroom, the dog has to be in the bathroom with them. That scratch at the door and line a whimper, even though they're just like six inches away from you, they're incomplete. 
So for him, by helping him practice being calm in the house, we can help him feel a lot more relaxed. Uh, all right, now the last stage, uh, uh, well, a couple other things. The Guardian uses this kettle, and I didn't, I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not gonna go over the kettle training. I have a number of videos for that on my website. Uh, and if the Guardian wants to watch any of those, please message me directly and I can send you a link to one where it goes through all of them. Um, but if you do kennel your dog and your dog has separation anxiety and you're using this approach, while you're using this approach, you don't want to put your dog in this kennel when you go to work because that reinforces their fear because you are leaving me. So what I recommend the Guardian do is enroll him in doggy daycare for about two weeks while she really practices the heck out of the stay and helping the dog practice learning how to stay alone. And you can, and that way when we put him in here and do the other kennel training, which I'm not gonna talk about in this video, the dog feels comfortable going in here. Basically to sum up, to give you a quick summary, what I do is I put a treat, let the dog go get the treat and leave the treat or leave the kennel. And we just come up with, we come up with a new command word, let the dog do that over and over again until the dog just goes, starts lingering in the kennel and then, when, and then when the dog goes to the kennel on its own, then you go give it a treat for going into the kennel. At first to entice, then to reward. And after a while, the dog's like, I'm not, not going to leave because it rains treats in here, and I love these treats if you're using high-value treats. And then the dog feels comfortable because it's not being in here. The kennel usually represents two things. I'm being restrained, and I'm being abandoned. So if you have the dog practice being in here with the door open, and you're here while no longer being restrained, I'm not being abandoned, and a matter of fact, I get a lot of tasty reinforcers when I'm in here, so I like being in the kennel. And that's why I like coming up with a new command word when you're doing this so it doesn't have the baggage of the old one. Now, the last little step about separation anxiety is dogs see us leaving long before we actually leave. They do this because they recognize certain triggers that are associated with us leaving. The two most common ones are picking up, uh, putting on our shoes or picking up a bag, uh, and the other, uh, the, well, actually, the most common one is picking up your keys. Then it's picking up your sunglasses, putting your shoes on, doing the other things that you do before you leave to go to work. Well, what, what, what we want to do is desensitize the dog. I have a lot of clients that say, should we take the dog for your WALK? -okay? Well, if I have a dog that is triggered by the word a walk, I would say walk a hundred times a day when we're not going for a walk and break that association. We're going to do the same thing here with uh, the association. We're going to use the keys here. Now, this is going to be an interesting transit, uh, transition of the camera. I'm going to get up and I'm going to take over the camera. The guardian, I'm going to film her, and uh, now Woody is just chilling on the floor. And she, we're going to see, she's going to pick up the, the uh, car keys and we're going to see the response from it. And I'm going to direct her on how she can desensitize the dog so that the car keys are no longer a trigger. All right, so let's do, go ahead and film him real quick. This way we can do a more fluid transition. There we go. All right, now, the other thing I would like the guardian not to do is not to narrate. Do you, when you're leaving, do you say, okay, buddy, have a good day, and I'm not, do you say anything like that? Um, I usually say, I'll be, I'll be back soon, Wood, and I just leave. Okay, so when you leave, you want to make no production of it, and when you return, make no production of it. Like we talked about earlier, unbalanced states of mind, like excited. When you come in, he's in a kennel right now, uh, but if you get to the point where he's unkenneled, when you come in, if he's excited, just ignore him. All right, go ahead, and I'm going to have you just stand up, Walk and pick up your keys, put them back down, and sit down. So you saw that little spike in energy from Woody. Those keys came out, I, what did I do? I came straight to my guardian because that means she's gonna leave. I better be going with her. Woody, you're making the camera work a little bit more challenging, but that's okay, I'm up to the challenge. So now he has settled down. Go ahead and pick, stand up and pick up your keys again. Put them back down. If you know when you watch this, he's excited now, but he's not as excited as he was the last time. Now, what we do is we have to wait for him to return to a completely calm state of mind. Now, he's calm, but you see how he's looking at her. He's waiting for her to do it again. So now we just sit, go ahead and lean back on the couch, cross your legs, there you go. And she's not, I'm not, I don't show anybody's faces in video, so I'm cutting you from the shoulder down, but she's not looking at him. Looking at a dog is valid and engaging. All right, go ahead and stand up and pick up your keys again. Put them back down. The energy level is considerably less this time. So what you wanna do, we could do this all day, but what we wanna do is identify all the triggers. So you might wanna just uh, set up a camera or a recording and then just go through your morning ritual next time you get ready to go for work. And every time you see any excitement from him, just say, keys, shoes, 
you know, over there, uh, you know, something over here. And then what you want to do is systematically deprogram him by picking that thing up and putting it back down, picking it up and putting it back down. Go ahead and pick it up one more time and sit back down. And when you're watching this, you'll see a considerable difference. I mean, you see how much, cal how quicker he calmed down mm -hmm. and he didn't spike that exercise and that energy level. Dogs see us leaving long before we actually do because what we go through. I had one person that was a police officer. He had to get up on his off day, shower, and get up and put his uniform on. And as soon as the uniform came on, the dog freaked out. And then he would go sit down and watch TV. And then take off his uniform, went back and uh, laid in bed, got up and repeated the whole process. And after, by the time he had to fix five or six times, I was like, oh, this is just another drill. I'm pra we're practicing. I'm done practicing. And the whole point of this is taking it away. Uh, the excitement and uh, the trigger that is associated with this. So now when you pick up your keys, he's pretty kept. Just go ahead and pick him up and don't even stand up. Just pick him up and put him back down. We have one lick blip, licking of lips, well, two, uh, which is could be a sign of stress, but his energy there was beautiful. Didn't even get up. Now you didn't get up there, but and at first you're going to do the individual elements like the keys. Then you might do the keys and the bag. So go ahead and pick up your bag and stand up, put it on your shoulder. And you saw a little bit of a lick, lip lick, but this isn't as big of a trigger at, oh, there we go, a little bit. So now I'm ready. I'm coming with you. Go ahead and put your bag back down. That was holding the bag a little bit longer, by the way. Uh, that was on me. Uh, but you want to just pick it up. As soon as you see any excitement from the dog, put it back down and keep repeating it until he no longer gets, re uh, gets reactive for that. Um, let me see. So uh, if you, when you go through these, again, you're going to practice all these steps. And, and you're doing it in not necessarily any particular order, any conjunction, so that way the dog doesn't associate any of these things. Now, the next, last thing is what you'd want to do is, is actually when you, set, when you leave and you're going to leave your dog home, set your dog up for success. Get more exercise before you leave. Um, the guardian goes, takes him for walk, three walks every day, which is like two, three walks more than most of my clients' dogs and before I work with them. So she he gets good exercise. But uh, you want to actually uh, have him... Uh, we wouldn't put him in a stay and leave the apartment, but eventually once he's comfortable with it, you want to like go and uh, actually I'll show you one last little thing. Uh, I'm, and I haven't shown you how to do this, so this is going to be a little bit more rough. So go ahead and just get up and go to your door. This is a lot. This is going to be a pretty long video, but that's okay. All right. Go ahead and just uh, reach for the handle, but don't touch it and reach your hand back and do it again and do that about three more times. And this time, next time, jiggle the handle. Now jiggle your deadbolt. And now jiggle the deadbolt a couple times, then jiggle the handle, then open it at about an inch, and then close it. See that? Okay, so close it. And wait for him to SIT. Open it an inch again. And close it. That time, he lurched, but he didn't get up. Go ahead and do it again. There you go. And again. And so, and, and you're actually doing something even though I told you, haven't told you to do it. You're opening the door a little bit more each time, which is perfect. Keep doing it again. So just because she opens the door doesn't mean she's leaving. Sometimes she's, she's a weirdo. Every time she just goes to the door, just opens and closes and opens and closes it. All right, now open it, uh, go and close it and open all the way this time. Now go ahead and go sit back just in the corner of your uh, couch right here. And again, notice this energy is nice and calm. What I'd like you to do, because you have the screen door here, is after a while, have you get up and walk outside. And right now we have some construction, but there's steps right here. Go sit on the last step and read, an, not, not right now, but an e, read a quick email and then come back in. He can see you doing it. You're not leaving forever. You, the door is closed, so he can't get himself into trouble. And again, he's practicing being calm while you're right now, while you're not right next to him. How do you feel? It takes pro a practice, but it's not a hard yeah. deal. It's just a lot of little steps. Yeah. All right, well, these are some tips and tricks that you can use to stop your dog from suffering some separation anxiety. Isn't that right, Woody? That's right. <laughs>